recording this session is going into our private Facebook group, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. So please acknowledge that we are recording and get that item out of your way. And um, so we've got that going. All right, so um, we have uh, a tremendous opportunity to be healthier than we are every day. Um, it's about lifestyle. It's about the decisions and the choices that we make, and it's not easy. And so part of what we do here is to have a community where we can actually be together at least once a month. We have our Facebook group where you can join and ask questions in between. You can be part of that community. And uh, we have uh, we are finding that people are making changes in their lives as a result of these sessions. Um, Dr. Rick Howard has been leading us on a series here, and uh, we've been learning so much. And it is really a pleasure uh, for us to welcome all of you uh, here this evening. We have um, uh, a welcome video that we'd like uh, to have Barry go ahead and share with us, just so that you can get to know a little bit more about who we are. Do you ever feel the need for more energy, vitality, and a greater sense of well-being? Then stay tuned. We are natural health enthusiasts with yet another delicious recipe of best practices and holistic lifestyle health. Our natural health planners, sponsors, presenters, and friends compile and share the simplest, most natural discoveries and practices targeted to restoring and maintaining energy, as well as a sense of well-being that we all want in our daily lives. It has been said that health is a state of complete harmony of the body, mind, and spirit. Therefore, through the practice of the eight laws of natural health, integrated with evidence-based research, we see a world empowered by Christ's love that is passionately seeking to be its healthiest in body, mind, and soul. And that's why we're so glad you've chosen to be here. Join us each month to help us celebrate the Creator for the resources and knowledge that consistently optimize His gift of natural healing in our bodies. We thank our hosts at the All Nations Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church in partnership with Community Outreach Incorporated for providing this one-of-a-kind opportunity that helps us all live healthier tomorrow than we are today, every single day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your Natural Health Meetup presenting team for this life-enhancing edition. Phenomenal. Yeah, thank you, Barry. Thank you for that. Uh, well done there. And um, we're going to get an opportunity here to see this presentation. Uh, we have, you know, like I was telling uh, Bridget earlier that we've been around since 2015. Uh, we put our all of our meetings online, primarily since COVID, but we have had a tremendous opportunity to be a service in the community, helping people. And um, I'm trying desperately to get to my screen here. So here we are. There we go. And now I can share with you. Wow. Mary, what's happening here? Okay, I think I got it. All right, so we have um, uh, natural health enthusiasts and the whole idea behind this is information, right? We wanna be sure that we provide information. We are, even if we have health professionals on our team, uh, we are not giving out any medical advice here. And uh, this is our disclaimer officially stating that this is purely educational in nature. Uh, if you are having a health condition or you have a health goal, 
Uh, certainly, members of our team are available to talk with you and discuss with you one-on-one. -on -one. However, our main goal is in this particular forum to provide you with enough information that you can make healthy decisions for your life, for the, the lives of people in your family. And I will also share with you that one of our goals is to consider the blue zones around the world and how ultimately that we could have together through lifestyle changes, through proper selection of healthy food choices, toxic free options that become available from time to time, uh, that we could be a virtual blue zone. So we know that Loma Linda, California is the only one in the United States so far that's been around for a while. Albert Lee, Minnesota is coming close behind as another Blue Zone community. And they'll soon be on the map, I'm sure. But think about it, that because of the lifestyle of people in these different areas of the world, because of the source, uh, sources from which they get their foods, uh, because of the tempo and the rhythm of their lifestyle, which Dr. Rick Howard is going to be speaking a little bit about today, um, somewhat from a different perspective, but somehow very, very much reflective of a daily routine. And just because of those choices, those opportunities, those geographical areas where culture organizes the day in such a way and the resources for food and for recreation and for family are all constructed in a certain way, just because of that, just because of that, they live to be centenarians. They live to, uh, in a healthy way without the need for medication in these communities. Isn't that amazing? And if you think about it, we can do it too. We can do it too. We come together, we share with each other, we struggle with each other. We take the opportunity to learn and to be vulnerable. What is my weak spot? What is that weakness that I have that's getting in the way of my excellent health? And if we can somehow discuss, come together, share and learn, and immerse ourselves in this kind of conversation, we will see a huge difference, a huge difference in the short term and the long term for those of us who desire to be healthy. So that's why we're here. This is, this is one of the areas that we found to be extremely important for us. And um, we'll, we'll have more discussions as to how we'll put this together. But I'd like to encourage you to be a part of our community and to have this initiative as part of your goal as well, to be part of a virtual Blue Zone. And so um, just a reminder then that we also, and I'll publish these a little bit later in our chat window, uh, but please uh, join our favorite our, our private Facebook group. Um, we have just all of our recordings there and uh, we are definitely um, available to be contacted. We'll give you some additional information there. Barry, if you could uh, monitor the microphones for us, please. And if if we have an opportunity uh, to get to, to talk a while, to communicate, we'll be able to answer more of your questions on Facebook or through our health meetup. Uh, if you're a member of health meetup, just send us a question right there. Uh, we'll answer you. It may take us a couple of days to get back to you, but we will attempt to answer you in a reasonable time. And we also provide for that entire community, uh, what should I call it? Um, uh, tip and trip yeah. and additional information that can be very helpful in uh, maintaining our health. So I'd like to share, just to go back to that uh, community that we just mentioned, our health meetup. Um, we have here, um, this is, I don't know if you're able to see this, so let me actually do a new share. All right, so that way you can see what I'm sharing here. Um, this is uh, the 
title for today, Food and the Habits of Life, the Key to Building Powerful Health. And as we go through here, uh, you will identify a few questions that we'd like to have you think about. Why, despite your best efforts to eat right, exercise and follow health advice, you still find yourself struggling with discomfort and sometimes disease? And why the wisdom of establishing good daily lifestyle habits first, and then adding in the integration of healthy foods seems like the sequence doesn't work too well that way because we start out our lives just enjoying food and having what we like, right? And we fall into that kind of routine. Dr. Rick is gonna help us figure some of those nuances out today. And so we want to thank you so much again for coming. And Michael Hartung, are you able to uh, give us uh, our opening prayer today? <clears throat> Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm here. Let me, do I need to use my video? or? That would be ideal. All right. Hold on a second. All right. There we go. Put, a, put some light on the subject. All right. Okay, um, let's um, let's ask the Lord to bless our evening here. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and learn of the different ways we can heal, learn the different things that you have put on this earth for us, Lord. We're so we're so caught up in buying medicines from the store and big pharma and other things that it's come to a point where we really don't know what's the best for us. And yet if we look close enough, we see that you've put everything here for us, Lord. So please let us all leave with something that will help us um information for the future information for now information that we can share with one another and our friends our family loved ones lord there is so much here a wealth of information always in these health meetings i thank you for michael dale campbell and everybody that makes these meetings possible lord and again thank you for this opportunity to bless us with this information in jesus name i pray amen Amen. Dr. Danny. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm glad that you're able to join us uh, this uh, March 12th, Tuesday evening. Uh, second Tuesday of every month, we try to put on a presentation for you um, to see how you're doing with your health and see where you can grow. Um, I have become a, a custom of doing this. It's a habit. Does anyone have pen and paper ready? I take notes whenever I come to these meetings because there's always things I learn. There's tons of questions I start to write down and um, I want to use it when it's time for me to, um, to go back. So um, I want to ask this, well, um, do you have a habit of waking up in the middle of the night? Mm -hmm. Would like to answer that one. No! Oh! I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Who would like to answer that? Do you have a habit of waking up in the middle of the night? I do. Uh, please excuse me just one second. Yeah, let's see here. Who was that? Oh, I see. Chase one, Chase uh, plus, I think it was. Uh, one, uh, so it's really yeah. Apologize, folks. Uh, don't see him or her now. So, for those of you who are, thank you. 
our um, uh, who have come in with the Zoom link. Um, I I'm, we're going to eventually have to switch to a registration where the link you get will ask you for your email address and you register that way. Um, so each person will have their ability to connect with their own link. But in the meantime, uh, please, uh, we apologize for the intrusion. Dr. Danny, please continue. Thank you, Brother Michael. Yeah, so um, I was asking a question about waking up in, in the middle of the night. Um, I have a habit that I'm wanting to be honest with everyone and say, um, I don't get enough sleep. Hmm. All right, I don't get this is something that I don't know if it's my body or, or if um, I've developed it. But he did not need to know that. He did not need to know that. Thank you for uh, taking care of Christopher. Yeah. So, so we're going to talk about habits. Um, one of the first questions I thought of, uh, I just came back from a mission trip with uh, the seniors. Uh, we were to an island uh, in the Caribbean called St. Lucia. And so St. Lucia is an island that I'm very familiar with. My parents are from there. And while we were there, I, I looked at the students eating um, certain food that they've never eaten before. Uh, maybe this will ring a bell. Um, something called dashing, <laughs> something called breadfruit, right? Something called cassava. Maybe some of you are familiar with these and some are not. But as I looked at these students eating, I thought to myself, and I'm asking you this question this evening, uh, do you remember, no, you don't, life without lights? When, when there were no lights, <laughs> what was our habits? What was our lifestyle like? Uh, does anybody have a thought? Um, life without lights, the lights that you flick on, you switch. Just well, unmute I mean yourself and share. I remember when I was growing up in Jamaica, we used to visit people living in the rural areas. They were friends of my parents and they had no electricity in their home. Uh, they would light a lantern and they would have kerosene in there. They'd have to put the kerosene under pressure, pumping it up mm -hmm. and allow the, uh, the wick or the, there was another name for it, to get warm enough and it would illuminate very, very br bright, but you'd have to move it from room to room as you move through the home in the evening. Right. That's what I remember. Does anybody else remember anything else? Go to bed early. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> there we go. And, and so let, let's move beyond the lights, right, that we have in our homes, right, to to what was life like, and I'm asking about specifically in regards to foods, what was life like without electricity now? What can you tell me about that? What do you think um, they did when there was no electricity in the area of food? Mm. Dan, are you asking uh -huh. in preparation? In preparation? Is that what you're asking? Are you are you directing the question? What did they do? How did they prepare food since they didn't have electricity and stoves? And no, in, in in all aspects. Um, okay. When they did not have electricity, when electricity was not invented yet, um, what was the life of of someone who wanted to eat? Very basic. Okay. So a lot of raw food, fruits, vegetables, um, no frying or very little frying. Um, it, again, very basic, very simple, and maybe that is was a better thing. And I'll I'll, I'll end it with that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I think they used to salt their their meat. Okay. Yeah. Preserve. Preserve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as, as we go throughout this evening, I want you to think about those, those questions, right? Um, because I think throughout our life, we've developed habits that may not be um, to, our, to our, our best health. And um, I think with the introduction of technology, the introduction of industrialization, um, 
you know, some will say, hey, we're heading into the future. But in the area of our health, where are we heading actually? As I've mentioned, I teach at a, a high school. And so the introduction of cell phones, let's say, um, sure, it's an advancement, but how many young people today are filled with anxiety, uh, filled with something called um, FOMO? I don't know if you're familiar with that, fear of missing out. Yeah. And, and so we have these habits that, um, that uh, have come to our society. And in the area of health, uh, uh, Dr. Rick, um, who, you know, I don't know how much of his background he will share, but, you know, he didn't come up from um, the the Christian perspective that that we that he is today. So he had some habits that, um, by God's grace, he was able to to let go of. But we're going to talk about that um, at length after he does his presentation. When he's finished with his presentation, as customary, we will have a time for questions and answers. Um, you can ask questions about your personal experience. Uh, you can ask questions about what he has shared uh, this evening so that you can get uh, a better scope as to where you would like to be. As I've mentioned, I keep my my book right next to me because I do take notes. Um, there's quite a bit of things that he's going to share that may be new to some of you. And, um, you know, you want to take this and just digest it after the meeting is over. Um, after the question and answer, we have a video that we're going to show as a closure. And something that we love doing is just um, cutting off the recording and having a chat. Let's get to know you and we want you to know us, who we are, why we are on this journey and um, how you can be blessed uh, by the camaraderie of those seeking to understand. And um, Bridget shared some of that earlier uh, before we started. So uh, that's what we have planned for you this evening. Um, but before Dr. Rick comes on, uh, we want to hear a testimonial. Um, our our friend, um, Dr. Dale, has a few uh, inspiring thoughts from his personal experience as it relates to habits. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Danny. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen really quickly to go ahead. and uh, But can everybody see this? Uh, photograph on the screen. If you would like to take a picture of it or a snapshot of it, feel free to do so. Um, if you didn't get one, you want one, uh, I'm happy to share it separately. Uh, but I was a healthy eater, but I had too much orange juice. Uh, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> Orange juice is a good, good food. In fact, so I thought. Um, because the juice itself, after sitting for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, uh, a month or two, even though it's refrigerated, it's not quite as healthy as it was when it was in the orange. And so one of the challenges that I found was making those fine distinctions, right? Of, okay, so juice is good. Yes, certain kinds of juicing are good. Uh, but in, in addition to that, though, we want to have foods as fresh as possible. And what I have found is that seeds and nuts really provide for us a great way to healthy nutrition. And the reason I bring this picture up is because I have very tiny amounts of just about all of these things here pretty much every day. Um, so I'm not going to go through this list here because they're all labeled and you can see them here. Uh, but if you look closely, uh, there are a few things that you may not be aware of, uh, such as bladder rack, uh, that's out of the ocean. Um, we also have uh, Irish moss somewhere in here, I believe. I, th I should have it in here if I don't. But over here, we have a green powder, marine phytoplankton, which is just replete with nutrients. Uh, it's a green powder. And these whole foods 
these whole foods, when I'm finished with this pretty much once a day, I don't have cravings for my unhealthy foods. And that's the point I wanted to make. Sometimes if we can find a great balance of some main meal uh, that will be complete. So we have all the proteins, we have uh, carbohydrates, we have fats, we have pro um, you know lots of vitamins and minerals all through this. It doesn't have to be this particular set of items, but as you do your own research and you find I things that you enjoy, things that are whole foods, whole fruits, and to this I add apples or pears or something else, and the food combinations, Dr. Rick may say, look, you know, there's some things that are really wrong with that, Dale, uh, and I'm okay with that. My point is to find a source of whole foods that will actually give you all of the nutrients that you need so that you don't crave the unhealthy sweets and so on. And many people look at me and say, how can you resist that Lemon meringue pie that you use to chop down half of the pie all by yourself. Or the fruit cake that your mom used to make and send all the way from Jamaica and you'd eat pretty much half of it in a couple of days. I don't have those cravings anymore because of this particular new habit that I have replaced those items with. And so I just want to encourage you that there is a way. This may not be yours, but this is what has worked for me. And I'm just happy to share that there is an answer. And Dr. Rick is going to give us some more information as we go through. So Dr. Rick, I think is next, right? Yes, food and the habits of life. Food and the habits of life. Yeah, so we want to... Um first share our screen and say good um uh it says that you need to help me to be able to share michael oh did you accept the co-host let's see okay i think there we are All right, should be able to see that. Um, yes, we can. I'm going to make sure we... Okay, so foods and food and the habits of life. And even though... Uh, we hear all of this stuff, and I am in the midst of that, talking to people about foods that are good, foods that are not good, herbs and different things. I think uh, there is a dimension to our health, that to choosing a healthy life that we miss entirely. And I want, I know we're not going to have enough time to go through the nuances of this, but I hope that you, uh, we've simplified some of the things and I've just taken a few key thoughts and made that available. So usually when we think about choosing a healthy life, we think about number one, getting rid of bad things. That's number one on our mind. You know, I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop junk food. I'm going to stop stressing out. I, I'm going to stop with alcohol. And those are good goals. But if you do that alone, like you see there in red, it's, it's sort of a, a roll of the dice. You know, how many times have you heard people say, yeah, I want to stop smoking. I've tried, but I just can't do it. Or I, I'm, I love pizza and I do pretty well until the birthday party comes along, right? 
we have to understand this idea that the habits that we have are the strongest change uh, uh, and life life change that we have. And so we want to ask ourselves first, what what do humans need to live? And you can unmute for a second or send it in the chat. But but what do humans need to live? What do you need to be healthy? Let's put it that way. And if you and if you can't think of it, I I got some thoughts for you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said minerals. Okay, minerals. Okay, all right. We do need that for sure. But even on a basic level, if you were out on an island and you were gonna you you. You knew nobody was coming to rescue you for two weeks. Would you look for minerals? What would be the basic things that you look for or try to do or try to accomplish? Water. You want to share what you wrote in the chat? Okay, I'm uh, away from my chat here, but... No, I was asking Regina if she would like to share what she wrote. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I see it. Water, she said. That's it. <laughs> Water. And to me, there's almost nothing more basic than water. <laughs> right? However briefly. Huh? Uh, somebody is off mute. Please mute yourselves. Very like outside of Okay, so 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 let's let's look at some of the things that we need because I do want to uh, get through this part quickly. Water is is critical. We usually get our minerals from our foods, but what else do we need? We first of all we need to breathe, right? If you don't breathe, then nothing else is gonna matter, right? Do you try, try to give minerals or water to a dead person who's not breathing? No. If they're not breathing, there's no point. Water is critical. And so much so that your skin, your brain function, your nerves, your muscle function, all of this, your digestion, your bowels will all change if you don't have enough water. Just that simple thing. Um, unfortunately, and I'm, I'm not going to get deep into this right now, but unfortunately, water out of the tap for most people is a terrible thing, okay? Uh, we're finding that there are medicines in the tap water. There are um, other things that are in the water that are so toxic that you almost have to be careful drinking water these days. But how about digestion, improving your digestion and metabolism, right? Right. You have to be able to digest what you eat or else really it doesn't matter if you're eating organically, freshly purchased produce. If you can't digest it and metabolize it, it does you no good. Minerals, for let's use that as an example, has to pass through the liver most of them to to be um they have to be broken down or chelated in the liver before you can even absorb them so that's that's a whole nother discussion we all know eating food we know about sleeping we know about moving and this is what enables us 
to learn and grow and choose. And I am underlying um, this discussion with these simple things and how we choose to learn, grow, and choose are probably just as important as the food choices that we make, okay? And that's a different idea, um, you know, than most people would would really be familiar with. And so we're going to go on. This was a slide that I put in last time. I'm not going to really discuss it, but here are some of the signs that we see as disease signs, right? Um, and all I want to say about this is these are signs that your body has the wrong habits instead of saying oh i need to go to to the store to buy this <laughs> excuse me um or buy that blood pressure is not a disease but it's a gauge of how we balance our life. So if I've stayed up too late, my blood pressure is gonna tend to be high. If I stayed up too late, my digestion will be off. If I get distressed and don't drink water, then the kidneys are the main thing that help remove insulin from the bloodstream that causes diabetics so much problem. So these things, instead of just saying, oh, I need to go to the health food store, your first thought should be, what is this telling me about how I'm living? That's what the first thing should be. How am I living? So why is it? And there's a reason. Why do we only think of food? We think of unhealthy foods and we think of what I call pro-healthy foods, right? And the reason I call them pro-healthy foods instead of just healthy foods is if you're not digesting properly, if you're not sleeping, if you're not eating at the right time, even all these wonderful foods can become toxic to your body. So I just want you to let that sink in, okay? Um, yeah, these things can become toxic, actually. So there are laws that are, we live by and operate by. I've shown this before, haven't one of these days, we'll go deeply into what those uh, seven dynamics. There are seven things that your body wants to do that if you do these seven things, you, you will almost be assured that you will be in a, in a far, far better health than, than you would think. So, Let's go to the next one. So here's the thing. The first key that I want to give, life habits are more powerful than simple, healthy food choices. So when I say I want to change my diet, I want to lose weight, I want to do this, do that, the habits that I form will will make the food choices bow the knee, so to speak. Your food, even though it's powerful, even though it has potential to be wonderful, it will fit around the habits of your life. So most people saying, I want to lose weight. What derails your diet? What derails how you live? Uh, it's that wedding dinner coming up. It's the wedding and birthday showers and the food that they will serve. It's the potlucks that, oh yeah, I said I wasn't going to eat any cheese, but 
Ah, they got potluck. They got my favorite macaroni and cheese, or I got they got this Thanksgiving. Oh, my my aunt Susie is cooking Thanksgiving. How can I pass up her sweet potato pie? Right? It is these are the habits of our lives. And if we don't pay attention to the habits, the foods will wrap themselves around the habits. And it's almost, it will seem almost impossible to change that. Okay. So the first question we got to ask when you're trying to change your life is the first question uh, God asked Adam. He said, okay, where are you at? <laughs> where are you starting from? And I want to just show something that I want, I developed for another seminar, but I just thought I would flash this on the screen just so you can see this is kind of interesting. So we're dealing with life, okay? So we think of life in this broad kind of way that that's all sorts of miracles are going to happen. Uh, there are principles, there are laws that we live by, and life we all believe could be very good, right? Very good. But here's the problem. We don't live to the possibilities most of the time. We live to our limits, to the limits. We see other people in wonderful shape. We see people who are doing good things. And we say, okay, well, it's possible for me to do that. Not thinking that in order to do what you see them doing and to reach the boundaries that they're reaching, you have to have a lifestyle that's akin to theirs. Here's where we live. The red boundaries are, are what's possible, but most of the time, everyday life is where we usually live. And what drives those things in our everyday life is our choices. And that's what brings sickness and disease and I'm not feeling well. It's things that we don't understand about what choices we're making. Okay. And I'll give you a simple one. I grew up in the South of the United States. It was common. It was almost uh, a ritual habit that we would have when we ate our food. We would have a big glass of ice water or sweet tea or something with the meal, not knowing that that habit destroys your stomach's ability to receive and digest that food. Something so simple as that, but for most people, become a ritual, so much so that when you go to restaurants, when you go to fast food places, what do they do? They offer you something to drink with your meal, okay? So the, the, the choices that we make in everyday life actually are the things that determine how well we will fare. It's not absolute all the time, but it is important. So key number two, to change your health, you must first change your life. Okay? To change your health, you must first change your life. The problem is most of us do not think about our life long enough, hard enough, seriously enough. And I'm, I'm saying, I want you to think about your life so seriously that you actually 
first just make a listing of your daily routine. You're not trying to change anything right now. You're just trying to look at it and see, wow, where am I? What do I do? How do I do uh, what I do? Uh, do I eat at eight o'clock or do I eat at 10 o'clock or do I eat breakfast at all? Do I eat lunch? When do I eat lunch? Or do I just eat breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner? You need to be familiar with the habits of your life if you're going to make changes. And I tell this to people, especially when you're trying to make health changes, because you cannot go on a journey without knowing where you're starting from, right? The doctors, when they're asking you diagnostic questions, what are they trying to find out? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you starting from? Okay. So this is a daily way of beginning to investigate your life and finding out what am I doing? So I'll give you an example with this. If you say, wow, um, I want to eat a heavy meal in, in the morning for breakfast, but I, I don't get up till 7.30. And then so 7.30 to eat at 8, I only have chance for cold cereal and pizza toast and something else. So I recognize, wow, if I'm going to eat a, he a heavier meal in the morning, guess what? I've got to erase the rising time from 7.30 to a time that allows me to make that change. That is why most people fail when they try to make health changes because they try to insert those changes in their present schedule and there's literally no time for it. There's literally no space for it. They literally don't have a, 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 a habit to do that. And so you might do it a day, you might do it a couple of days, you might even make a week, but guess what? If the habit is not formed, it will not displace the other habit and you will fall off the bandwagon, as they say, okay? So let's let's go on. So I, I I there's more I could say about that last all of these, but I, I I want to go to key three just for time's sake. Unless you are already sick, make simple changes first. Build new habits thoughtfully. So if you know that you have, let's say, digestive problems, which is so many people have issues with digestive problems, your digestive problems could not be, quote unquote, your fault. Your digestive problems could have been you in inherited a poor bacterial environment from your parents or from contact with going to another country or a lot of different things. But to start changing, if you're sick, then you have to make more rapid changes. But if you are not, hey, maybe your part of your routine will be, hey, when I eat my breakfast and then when I drink water between my meals, I am going to have probiotics. I am going to have X amount of probiotics and that's going to be become my daily routine. So I'm going to make sure that the little things, and I'll show you some examples, not drinking with meals, okay? That's, that's, that's just a small habit and I believe that you should tackle this habit, I mean, this uh, 
change until it becomes a habit. Don't try to change 12 things at once, right? Just get this one until, wow, every meal you eat, you do not drink water with. Every meal you eat, you drink your water a half hour to 45 minutes ahead or half hour, 40 minutes, 45 minutes afterwards. You do not drink. Build on that thoughtfully. So normalize your bedtime. And you want you do not want to be staying up. And there are physiological reasons for not staying up way after nine o'clock or 9.30 or something like that, 10 o'clock. There's physiological reasons. And so one of being that your body makes a uh, human growth factor, it's called, and but it's only made between the hours of approximately, and I say approximately, 9 p.m. and let's say 1.30 or 2 a.m. If you miss it, your body says, oh, the store is closed and you won't get that done just because of your sleep time. Okay. The only other time is if you're uh, playing full court basketball with uh, brother Campbell or something like that. And then when your body needs that extra stuff, Hey, you can get it. But other than that, the only way to get that human growth factor is what? It's going to bed early. It's better for you to get up early and do what you got to do than to stay up late and do it. Okay, walk for 10 minutes every hour. I had a guy that says, wow, I'm just so busy at work. I can't, I can't take a half hour of walking or I can't walk an hour a day. I can't. I said, how many hours are you at work? He says, oh, nine or 10. I said, so just walk for 10 minutes per hour. That gets you out of the chair and you can get your body used to moving and you will build a habit. He said, wow, I think I can do that. You see, because we made it a simple change and we thought about it. So another one is express more thankfulness you will notice that people who um, have, let's say, digestive um, uh, you know, problems like, and I'm thinking of IBS or Crohn's disease or something, stress tends to make that activate more. And there are other reasons. But if you build a habit of just saying, thank you, uh, I, I, thank you for doing that. Thank you for fixing my breakfast. Thank you for supplying my, you will see it will take the stress um, out of most things that you do. Now, someone asked a question about drinking. Cold water uh, is 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 not a great thing. Usually, your body will not use water until it's at least the temperature of the stomach. Now, on hot, hot days when your body is hotter, then your body absorbs some of that coldness and it's a little bit better. But most of the time, you don't want cold water, okay? Um, and I'm gonna make one third of your meals ideal. And simply what I mean by that, if you eat, let's say three times a day and you know your meals aren't ideal, even to according to what you have learned, what you do is say, uh, pick seven of those meals through the, the week and say, these are the days that I'm going to move towards my ideal uh, meal. 
And you just keep that habit going until you can make it a ritual for you. Uh, keep that change going until you make it an, a habit and that will help you. Schedule your changes is what we're saying, okay? Schedule your changes. Build new habits thoughtfully, okay? And so um, life has laws and we have to understand that, okay? Even though most of the time it seems like we can get away without paying attention to those laws, those laws bring us alignment with God. Those laws bring us uh, loyalty. They show the loyalty that we have uh, with God. And that is expressed in the simple things we do every day. The daily practice reveals the character and choice. That's how you bring it into all the other dimensions. I just thought I would show that very simply. The love and fairness of God is the law, how I show my allegiance to God, and the life habits reveal my choices. Well, we only see mostly the life habits when we get out of whack, right? When we get sick, we say, oh, I need to stop doing that. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten that ice cream. Oh, I should. But really, the secret to good health or improving your health, it may not make you perfect, is to change your life habits in such a way that you can mentally have say, I only want to do what's best for me, right? I only want what's best for my body. And then once you make that a choice or attitude, then your habits will uh, show that. So here's the last and final key, okay? Master your habits and your life will change, okay? Morally, mentally, physically, we've I've shown this before. I, I will, if you see me present, I, I will harp on these things because they represent your mindset, your attitude, and your action. The mindset, tells you whatever your the mind feeds on, it will set the context for your life, for the life. So what does that mean? It means that if I sit and watch Burger King commercials all day and I'm and I'm trying to get Burger King out of my thought, it will not work. Subtly my my Without reason, it seems, my, my body will say, wow, I want a, 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 a char cold, you know, char broil burger from Burger King with some fries on the side. And I want this because you have set your mind on that. You have to be around people who have a similar goal. You have to uh, adopt uh, an attitude that support your life story. So the life habits will tell that you adopt will tell the story of how you live. Okay. So that's where attitude comes in. You ever seen someone who they come into work, they come into the classroom, they come in to school and they have a chip on their shoulder, right? Why? Because their mindset is wrong and their attitude that they're embracing is wrong. Then the then their actions will reveal that. So the mindset adopted plus the attitude you keep will determine your actions. Okay? So 
I'm going to stop right there, uh, Dr. Danny, and uh, we can take any questions or comments that people have. Have you unmuted, Danny? Hmm. Go ahead now, Danny. Go ahead. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't sure how loud I, sh I should have shouted to say <laughs> the host must, must let me unmute. Hey, Dr. Rick, thank you so much. Um, as always, I, I, I took down some notes and... Um, I know some of you will have questions. I anticipate you have questions. I hope you have questions. Um, but you use the term uh, or phrase that I want you to just touch base on a little bit. You talk about um, displacing. When I thought of displacing, I thought of like putting something in water and whenever something goes in, it makes the, the, the water go elsewhere. How do you tie that into to, to habits, um, practices? I, I'm glad you you brought that up uh, because most people, and including myself, have failed at changing some habit because I try to change the habit. Mm. You, you don't change habits, really. You displace habits. And what I mean by that is if I'm used to eating three meals a day, and I want to eat two meals a day, then what I do is start implementing the things that allow me to make that change, okay? So what does that mean? Um, maybe I adjust my timing for the meals. Maybe I adjust my... Um, the amount of water that I drink between meal times. Maybe I uh, make the meals a little heavier so that my body can start getting used to a different habit. And when I do get used to that new situation and I keep practicing that, then the other habit will just disappear. It, you don't have to struggle to to do very much because you've displaced that habit. You you haven't struggled. It's it's like saying, "Oh, I'm going to stop smoking," and 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 you concentrate your mind on not smoking. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to probably smoke because you're concentrating on it, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of concentrating on it what do i need to do how can i displace this how can i not make it harder for me to smoke how can i uh put my cigarettes away that i have to be more intentional about thinking about smoking you see what i'm saying yeah. by doing those things i displace habits all right thank After you um has her hand raised. I don't know. Yes. If you... Astrid? Hi. Yes. Thank you. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you, everybody, uh, and mainly the organizers for creating a space like this. I think it's very important to talk about our health and healthy uh, eating habits in a, you know, in, in, in this day and age. Uh, my question kind of pertains to the amount of like how many meals we have to eat a day, mainly because I am following a, an intermittent diet. Um, so I pretty much fast for 16 hours and then I eat kind of like my first meal, like breakfast uh, around noon-ish time. Um, I've heard a lot of people saying that breakfast is the first, that, that is the main thing and, and they have this uh, notion that it has to be like breakfast has to be like first thing in the morning. So uh, that is my first question. I, I, I mean, do you agree with that? I mean, there's just so many, uh, I guess, different um, uh, 
misconceptions, not misconceptions, but, you know, different ideas of, of the amounts of meals that we have to consume throughout the day. And also, so, do you recommend uh, snacking in between uh, meals? Okay, so so let's, let's deal with the first thing first. Um, I, too, uh, eat a... I don't eat that many meals. I I practice intermittent fasting, if you want to call it that. That's a newfangled term for something that's been around for so many, 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 many years, uh, at least 160 years. So um, the, the key to everything is asking yourself, what did God do in the body? What are the laws that he set up in your body that you can just see? And one of those things would answer your question. The body is more intentional about when it wants certain types of foods and when it wants other types of food and when it doesn't want any food, <laughs> okay? So the body already says, you can do what you want, but, <laughs> you know, around 8, 8.30, somewhere around there, I'm closing up shop for the pancreas. The pancreas, which most people use to, uh, its primary uh, job is to express digestive enzymes to help uh, digest the food. Well, it's not as good as the enzymes that come from the foods that you eat, especially unprocessed foods. So in the morning, your body wants, is more in a better space to handle protein then later let's say after two o'clock your body is not in as good a place of processing proteins and particularly because proteins take a longer time to digest and spe especially if they're animal proteins okay so you got to look at the body to tell you. I know people say all sorts of things, but you got to look at the body to tell you what what the laws are, right? It, it, it's no sense in you asking someone who doesn't drive, um, do, how do I make a left turn? They could give you their opinion but they don't know how to drive, right? So would you ask them? I hope not. So the body also has very specific rules about how it digests food. So if I were to eat a salad and then I say, oh, well, I'm gonna eat this hamburger or I'm going to eat a veggie burger, or I'm going to eat uh, some nuts. Halfway through those nuts, it doesn't matter if it's, I mean, uh, halfway through that salad, as soon as those nuts touch your mouth, then your body starts di releasing different enzymes. It stops on the enzymes that would deal with car, um, carbohydrates and starts on things that would start with protein because it's the order of the body is proteins first, more complex foods first, down to the simple foods last. And that's how your body should be dealing with in foods. Most complex foods in the morning going down to uh, simple foods, fruits. Uh, if you're going to eat fruits, even within the categories of fruits, 
there are certain fruits that do not go together. There are certain fruits that are, you know, um, that 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 conflict with one another and will give you gas. So complex foods, uh, I saw the question, are yes. Particularly animal proteins are the most complex food. And I'll give a brief answer, uh, answer to why that is. It, it is because the animal gets all of their stuff from plants. Plants originate fats. Plants originate protein. Plants originate carbohydrates, right? There is no animal source that originates protein. And that would shock people, right? They are in they show up in animals because animals eat plants. And then they reassemble them in a way that they are tightly bound. And then it takes your stomach longer to unravel that. Whereas an animal like a tiger or a lion, they have different setup in their stomach so they can eat more of that stuff, whereas we can. So snacking, to your second point, I, I, I never recommend snacking because your body doesn't recognize snacking. You're either wet or you're not wet. You're either eating or you're not eating. <laughs> There's no such thing as a snack. That's made up. So if if you, once you start eating, let me get more specific. If you drink something that is other than pure water, your body sees it as eating. <laughs> so... The first thing we've got to do is learn the laws of the body, learn how the body works. That will tell us God's laws. People say all sorts of things, but they 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 make it up if they are not consulting God. Okay. Th thank you, Doctor Rick. You know, um, I know that there's another person with a question. Um, you've said this before, you have repeated it several times, um, and I know you're trying to emphasize this. We need to understand the body. Um, the body in general, yes, how the body works, but also ours individually. And I have a feeling that there are some individuals listening online today, um, and maybe those that will be listening a little later on the recording, um, that will want to know, what am I supposed to be looking for or trying to understand about my body um, maybe for so long for for 20 years 30 years maybe even 40 years they really haven't taken stock of um how their body responds all they know is that they're sick right or they feel a certain way um what are some simple ways we can start to say hey i feel something here let me trace it back to um what i think it could be how do we start to know the body being tuned okay. to the body? So, so the, the, is one of the keys that I gave was start making an investigation, start an investigation of your life, right? Um, if somebody died in your life, if they almost died in your life, you would start an investigation, especially if it was you, right? So you should look at the habits that you have. OK, as a starting place, look at your routine. What and I I did not I knew we weren't going to have time to answer in detail, so I didn't try to make a detailed uh, chart. But that that timing is just the beginning. You want to know, OK, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Oh, my blood sugar is out of balance. Okay. 
if you don't understand what that means, then maybe let that be something that takes you on a journey, but list all the things you know first, okay? So you list what you're doing, when you're doing it, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then you isolate what are my goals? What do I want to change? What things do I feel based on what I know right now need to change? Okay. So there's people who are eating a uh, ketogenic diet and they don't really even know that there are deficits built into a ketogenic diet. Dr. Atkins diet. There, there, there's, uh, I, I, I tried to find types of diets over the uh, years back, and I found over 200 different types of diets. One was eat anything you want diet, right? <laughs> One was eat the cookie diet. <laughs> Look, people are making up stuff. So number one, your diet is not going to be exactly the same as anybody else's. Why? Not exactly. Because you're not the same. So what you should look for is first, broad principles. First, secondly, record what you're doing and what your objectives are based on the knowledge you have change. Then you learn. As you learn, you go back and change. As you learn more, you go back and change and you adjust the habits to meet the information you have. Thank you. Are there others with questions? Yes, this is Allison. Hi, Allison. I was wondering, um, dinner time sometimes i just feel like having cereal for dinner raisin bran that's the only thing i eat with almond milk is that good um the only way that i could answer is that good is if i knew you and knew a little bit about you <laughs> what do you want to know well, 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 listen to what I'm saying first here. That depends on how well you digest, what you eat the other times of the day, and what your goals are based on what you need to change in your life. In general, though, Sister Allen, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is in the right pattern, okay? It is in the right pattern because carbohydrates are the last thing that you should have in the day. And carbohydrates will promote better habit of sleep. Carbohydrates will be reasonably quickly digested. And so you, the last thing you want to do is sleep with a lot of stuff on your stomach because it will rot yep. and it will cause other issues and then you'll be in a fix. Yeah, because um, like um, the sister was on before about breakfast. I am not a big breakfast person. And if I do decide to eat breakfast, I'm going late with it. 11, 10 to 11. Uh, then I won't, I don't like to eat after seven. There is no way. Um, if, you know, and then I'll have something to eat, maybe a salad or the cereal, you know, and, and I feel good and I don't feel like I need to eat. So I don't know if eating less, I, and it's not like I'm planning to eat it. That's just a habit I create. Yeah, I, Another I think... habit I create is 
When I let that brush my teeth, I don't put anything else in my mouth, more than water, nothing else. Anything yeah, I, to eat, I, I really. think that what we are trying to promote uh -huh. is, is intentionality. In other words, what if what if you met God one day and he said, oh, I'm just going to let the sun come up whenever it wants to today. I don't think I'm really in the mood for having it come up when it's supposed to or sunset or you couldn't predict whether water was going to be soft today or water was going to be hard as concrete or whether ice would freeze at 38 degrees, 37 degrees, 68 degrees. We want to mirror the intentionality that our creator mm -hmm. exhibited in our lives where we have the same thing. So I would recommend you would see improvement in your life just from having a, a, a set time or a set range of time that you're going to eat. Breakfast, dinner, whatever it is, have a set time. I'm going to eat between here and here. There are a lot of philosophies about how you eat and why you eat and all of that. Um, yeah, that's part of what I don't know, you know, about you. But I think that the question that you asked is basically that's an okay thing. I mean, usually uh, carbohydrates, fruits, uh, mm -hmm. which are fruits, uh, vegetables, some cereals, mm -hmm. those are decent things to, to eat with. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> Anyone else? Maybe you can put your question in the chat or just unmute yourself. I have a question. Janine, go ahead. Um, you said um, some things that I didn't know, um, like about uh, how your your um, pancreas, you know, shuts down at eight, or your growth hormone clocks in at nine. So, what other what is is there like a resource that tells us how our organs work according to time? Um, I don't know if I'm asking it. That's a great question. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I under, understand what you're asking, and um, that that's a tough one because, unfortunately, it's the the medical community that supplies most of the information that people call knowledge about health is very skewed and very uh just Bias, very prejudice. truncated hmm. it's very truncated um it's only through research uh papers and things like that that you can find out the fine details of things it's usually the only way that you can find it out is is really the fine details. I mean, uh, just like I, I read a a, a a a a paper probably three years ago, four years ago, on that showed that one of the a, a number of researchers thought that the next treatment modality for autism was probiotics okay getting the gut in in better shape but do you think that 
pharmaceutical companies are going to follow that research or promote that research. No, no, they're not. So you'll find, I was in Michigan um, doing some seminars and uh, I happened to go over uh, a friend's house uh, with my sister-in-law and her son was a pharmaceutical rep and I was in his room and he had the most amazing poster on. I asked her if I could have it or she could ask, you know, him if I could have it. But this told all, all the enzymes and things that make different transactions within the body and it was all charted out. I've ne I had never seen anything like that before in my life. But that information is out there. It's just finding that is tough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Janine. Uh, maybe we have time for one more during our um, recording session, um, but we don't want to, we do want to give time for our closing video and then the mixer uh, later after that. Anyone has more question? All right then, um, Barry, are you able to pull up? Oh, Janine, did you have something else? Yeah, sorry. No, no, great. Um, so um, this is kind of for my sister because the way that you started it off was exactly what she's going through. Um, waking up, you know, so often in the middle of the night, but, or I should probably say morning because she works a graveyard shift. Mm -hmm. So for people whose circadian rhythms are thrown off for the sake of livelihood, what would be the best? recommendation for them to try to adapt until maybe they could find something better okay i'm glad you added that last part um because uh it's almost like asking how can i drive 85 miles an hour on the speed on the freeway until the cop catches me <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh the problem with that is you're you're kind of going opposite the circadian rhythm, right? Yep. And so what that does is stress the body in unusual ways, particularly the adrenal glands, okay? And so it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a challenge. but there are ways. So one way, is to have her perhaps try uh, some probiotics. I, I use particular brand of probiotics that are very good. They're protolytic uh, uh, probiotics. And so they are pretty effective, but just by flooding your body with food and in between meals with probiotics, will begin to help uh, correct some of the imbalance of flora that working that kind of shift um, entails. Then the other thing is I there's this formula three that I use. It's a liquid tincture of herbs that is so good at revitalizing the the, the, flora? the adrenal glands mm. so that it it it'll it'll help her have a much better recovery and more normalize what's happening in her body you also should probably i, I like uh, certain liquid b vitamins that will help um, uh, replace because a person like 
that's working the third shift, they they burn up their B vitamins very, very quickly. And that becomes a problem because you you have to understand whether you are close to the edge or you're far from the edge. And if some people um, don't find out till they have a heart attack or a stroke. So mm -hmm. you don't want to be in that situation. So, uh, yeah, you do some preventative things. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Uh, one more question before we go to the video, um, Dr. Rick. Someone was asking on chat about adrenal glands. Um, is the did you see that question there? Yeah, and and, and I, um, what I mentioned was this formula three. Formula three is okay. a is a blend of a few herbs that is super good for that but um siberian ginseng you 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 have what they call adaptogen herbs which would be ashwagandha you would have siberian ginseng there's one uh a russian one that i cannot remember the name of right at this uh juncture but Things that serve as adaptogens are usually helpful for adrenal glands. All right. And you got to remember that the adrenal glands are called such because they sit right on top of the kidneys. So usually when the adrenal glands are stressed, the kidneys are stressed. Mm -hmm. and when the kidneys are stressed, the adrenal glands are stressed. So that means that Probably your 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 sister uh, could have problems with blood pressure, could have problems with uh, not sleeping well, uh, just because of that imbalance. Great information, great information. Well, friends, uh, we're getting to our our closing time. Um, let's watch this video as we prepare to close, and then on the other side, uh, we'll have uh, what we call our mixer. And so, Barry, are you ready for that? Monthly sessions, you can stay connected with us in as many as three easy ways. Our Facebook group has our live as well as archived videos along with other natural health updates and a place to post your questions. Our Natural Health Learn and Share Meetup site has announcements, reminders, and messages for you, and also our confidential requests for prayer page. We love to pray for you and any concerns of life that you may have. Use the link on the screen to stay connected for any one of these or all three. Wonderful. Uh, before we have our, our closing prayer, um, followed by the mixture, I just have a few thoughts. Um, and the first one is this, as you were pre presenting, Dr. Rick, I thought of um, practice uh, shows our priority. And practice shows our priority. And you're talking about habits. If we're in a habit of doing things that uh, honors God, right? If you, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Um, I think that's important that we practice things that show that God is our priority. Um, the Bible is clear about this body being a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so I hope and pray that uh, this evening, some of us have realized and will take away that what we practice, what our habits are, uh, shows our priorities. And we don't have to, to wait to make these changes. Um, we know that change sometimes uh, takes a while. Um, but as you've said, Dr. Rick, if we move towards that, uh, that is what's most important, um, even if it's small steps. Can I and make a comment I to... on that? Yeah, Dr. go ahead. Just just a small comment. Um, I, I, I think stretching that concept out a little bit and so we can see and understand it a little bit better. 
we can choose to glorify God with our habits and whatsoever, but we're already glorifying someone by our habits. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that is something to keep in mind that we need to displace things that are not glorifying God because we're glorifying somebody else. Good, good. And, and then my last uh, statement, you know, again, a biblical passage. Um, I can do how many things, the Bible says, through all Christ. Things. I can do all things through Christ. So I just want to encourage you, um, those of you that are here this evening, uh, it is possible. Uh, we can change. You know, they say it's it's um, hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Um, but with God, we, we can do it. Um, he will give us the strength. He'll give us the wisdom. And he has brought you to this uh, meetup this evening so that you can be encouraged, so that you can get some more information. If you would, please, um, bow with me as we close with prayer. Loving Lord, we want to thank you so much for, for truth. And the scriptures say, if you seek for truth, we will find it. And so, Lord, we are seeking with humble and honest hearts. So maybe some of us, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so you've allowed us to come to this meetup this evening. Lord, help us to learn. Help us to grow. And help us to choose to follow you and how you've orchestrated and arranged this magnificent body of ours. Be with each participant this evening and each guest as uh, we get ready to, to close. And Lord, on the other side, as we have our mixer, I pray that some will stay behind so that they can enjoy uh, just hearing more information and, and cross-pollinating ideas. We love you, Lord. Help us have a great night, get some wonderful sleep, and be revitalized in the morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And just a reminder, we have the links in our chat for staying connected and specifically for our Facebook page. Feel free to copy those, use them to stay connected until next month when we get together again on April 9 for another dose, another delicious iteration of our natural health conversation. So we're going to stay on. We're going to stop the recording right now. And let's see, how do I, yep, it is.